Illustrated has recognized Roger Crawford as one of the most accomplished, physically challenged athletes in history. He is the recipient of the ITA Achievement Award presented by the International Tennis Hall of Fame and is one of the most sought after motivational speakers in the world. Living with four impaired limbs, Roger embodies a no excuses mindset every day and brings instant credibility and authenticity to his speaking. Today, Roger's presentations go beyond his inspirational story and now focus on helping others reach next level success. Can you tell us a little bit about your limb differences? What happened that made you have limb differences? Mm -hmm. Well, Allie, first of all, it's really great to be with you and thanks so much for uh, giving me the opportunity. Um, I was born with a physical challenge. It affects all four of my limbs uh, from the elbows down and from the knees down. For people watching, they can see that I have two fingers on my left hand and one finger on my right hand. Um, have underdeveloped uh, lower right leg uh, and uh, my left leg was amputated when I was five years old. So I was fitted with an artificial leg or prosthesis. As far as what caused it, um, they've talked about it being a genetic um, uh, anomaly uh, called ectrodactyly. Um, that's likely what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I have four children and none of them have it. So, um, so, you know, we really don't, you don't really know for sure. I would say that most likely that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. How do you navigate uh, activities of daily living? And can you give us some examples of uh, how you manage everything? Well, you know, Allie, I grew up in a family that uh, had this philosophy. You don't live in pity city. And here's what it communicated to me is that I wasn't going to make excuses. I was going to find a way to conduct my life and do the things that I needed to in my life. And I wasn't going to use my hands and my legs as an excuse. And I think that was a really valuable message growing up. Now, I'm 60 years of age. So when I was growing so up, you're, you're younger than my mom. I'm like <laughs> so jealous. That's why I say like, and I knew that you were relatively young. That's why I say to have grandchildren at your age, it's just so nice. Anyways, yeah, it is nice. grow up and then they're, you're still young, even in your seventies, if they're 10, 11, anyways, go on, but go yeah, ahead. So anyhow, so, you know, when I was growing up, there really wasn't any assisted type devices. Uh, there was my artificial leg, but other than that, I just had to kind of figure it out on my own. And really, Allie, there's very little that I'm a, unable to do day to day. And, uh, you know, driving a car, I travel on my own. So there's not really anything that um, is necessarily limiting me because of my hands. I can't tie my tie, my wife ties it. So I've got people that are able to help me, but as far as day-to-day -day things, there's not a whole lot that, um, that really limits me. And I, I really want to give my parents a lot of credit for that because they instilled in me very early in my life that everybody's got challenges. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that mine yeah, was yeah. visible. And I think that's a very important mindset because mm -hmm. it allows us to see ourselves as not necessarily disadvantaged or disabled. It's just part of the human experience that we're going to have obstacles. And um, so that that was an important way of thinking about my life and what was possible. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And everyone has their own challenges. I mean, whether they're physical, learning, speech, you know, mental health, I mean, even divorce, whatever the case may be, financial, like every, you know, life is not perfect. And, you know, the higher power, they, they he wasn't going to make us 100% perfect. That doesn't make life, quote unquote, like we'd all well, be kind of boring if we were all the same. Well, I think it adds richness to our life. Of course. It, it, uh, it allows us to access gratitude, being thankful for what we have, yeah. because, you know, we realize that I know. there are things that we don't have. And, and you know, so I, I just think it's um, so important for people to, I think, look at life through the lens of, well, I may have this challenge, but that doesn't mean that, you know, my life is going to be less than or diminished. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that that's really, really important. You know, I think about my life and if there was surgery to give me normal hands and normal legs. I, frankly, I wouldn't do it. 
I, I wouldn't see the benefit from it. I see uh, the blessings from mm -hmm. having hands and legs like mine. I really do. And, and uh, I've had a really wonderful life in so, so many ways. And um, yeah. No, it's amazing. And I mean, almost everyone I speak to, and, and I obviously am included, um, but I mean, no one, including myself, would want to change their life. I mean, I think we all recognize our challenges. And yeah, I think you can sometimes look to the other side and see, oh, well, you know, X, Y, and Z may come easier, you know, obviously, tie, you know, giving, you know, your wife tying your tie versus you and like so forth. But in hindsight, like, you know, it's not really that important, quote unquote. Well, we can easily fall into the trap of underestimating ourselves and overestimating others. Right. You know, when when someone meets me, they can see some of the adversity that I've uh, faced. They may be fighting a battle that I have most likely have no idea about because right. you can't see it. So I, I um, that was an important philosophy growing up. It really was. Yeah, that's amazing. And it's great that your parents instilled that in you. Uh, as a kid, did you always know that you wanted to be um, a tennis athlete? Well, I, um, <clears throat> sports for me was a way that I could feel equal, that I felt like I was just like all the other kids because I could participate on the football field or the tennis court. So I've always been oriented towards sports. I, I really love athletics. Mm -hmm. And I think for, for, for all of us, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what our passion is, I think it's so important that, that we stay involved and we participate and we're active. And for me, that was sports. So yeah, ever since I was young, I've always, I've always loved sports and I've loved competition. I really have. And yeah, you know, for people listening, yeah, I'm often asked, well, Roger, did you ever participate in the Paralympics? <laughs> like that? But see, when I was growing up, there wasn't the Paralympics. It was right. just a different world. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I was growing up, you didn't see anybody who had a disability on television. Right. I mean, no. it wasn't, you, you didn't talk about it. So right. it was a different, different world. Now there's a level of acceptance, I think, that's yeah. much, much greater than it was before. And with that comes greater opportunities and greater possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and you talk about tennis, actually. I mean, obviously, there's the pair. I mean, there's the Paralympic and, you know, all of those types, you know, games. But, you know, you look at the major tournaments, the US Open, you know, the French Open, I mean, even like, you know, some of the tennis, like mini tournaments in California, whatever, you know, exhibitions and whatnot. You don't come across a lot of people that have disabilities, which is very interesting. Um, now I could be totally mistaken because I see, you know, it's the major X, Y, and Z people. Um, but that's really telling because like for you, for instance, as a professional tennis player, you know, you were really given quote unquote, like a gift to really be able to do something where in a setting that's very quote unquote normalized in terms of not having a disability. Mm -hmm. Well, I think too, that for me with tennis, I really focused it on what I could do mm -hmm. and I worked as hard as I could at being exceptional in those areas. Here's an example, consistency. Uh, people that played against me, it was like playing against a backboard. I kept getting the ball back over the net and I had a coach that helped me strategically look at my tennis game and say, the best opportunities I had for winning was to focus in on this. So it, it's really not different than other than other people that are athletes, right? Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to be a great servant volleyer. I uh, I wasn't going to be uh, likely, you know, a Wimbledon champion. I wasn't skilled at, at that level, but I was good enough to play Division One college tennis, and uh, uh, and it was again based upon that idea of what could I do, what was I good at what was going to be areas that I maybe wasn't as good at. And so I just really focused in on being consistent, being competitive, being positive, and that enabled me to reach a certain level of success. Yeah, for sure. And so um, just for people who are wondering, uh, how do you hold a tennis racket and a ball? Um, giving your well, I thought you might ask that. Yeah. So, 
So I'm going to show you my racket. Now, when I was growing up, I used a racket called the Wilson T2000. Okay. It had two parallel bars that were open here. This is a racket that Wilson Sporting Goods actually custom makes for me. Oh, okay. So it's a custom it's made racket. Different. Right. It's the same racket. Right. That anybody else would buy off the shelf, except there is this piece right here. I hope everybody can see it. Can okay. See that? It's, a, it's a square. I mean, it's a circle. No, it's just a area that I can slip my finger. Oh, in. I see what you're saying. Yes. And so that's how I hit the ball with two hands. Got it. And then I balance the ball with these two fingers. So if I'm serving, I balance the ball, toss it up, swing Got through. It. Wow. It's amazing. So that, that's how I hold on the racket. Yeah. And, and so, was, yeah. well, was it, I mean, was it difficult, uh, you know, when you obviously were deciding and, you know, in the beginning stages of playing tennis to find Wilson or another, you know, tennis racket company uh, to make uh, that, that slight adjustment or really any adjustments? Well, I actually made this adjustment myself up until about four or five years ago. I'd actually oh, wow. made a piece of wood and oh, that's uh, funny. Okay. Gonna engineer it myself, if you will. But uh, sure. I mean, there were aspects of it that's difficult, but one message I love to share with people is difficult doesn't mean impossible. Of course not. Things can be difficult, mm -hmm. but still possible. Of course. So I, um, yeah, so I just worked as hard as I could at be, being the best that I could be. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I wasn't on the professional tour making a living. I just didn't reach that but I did but I did get a college scholarship and play division one college tennis and so and I'm you know I'm very happy that I was able to to um to have that experience because it really shaped my life I think in a very profound way you know now I I spent or pre-COVID I spent my time mostly traveling and speaking to mm -hmm. corporate groups and association groups and now not so much I do a lot of zoom meetings right. and also I do a lot of personal coaching but Okay. So you're still playing tennis. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I assume so, but I didn't know. Oh, yeah. No, no. I mean, it's just such a big part of my life. Of yeah, course. I mean, sure. I mean, I, I'm 60. I probably don't play as well as I used to, but I love to oh, get out. No, and you're so football. young. No, yeah, thank sure you. you play. Well, no, I'm sure play. you play well, but you know, obviously it's different. Yeah. I mean, when you're younger and you're, there's sure. more of a, you know, but I still love it. No. And you should. And I mean, I, you know, I played with somebody when I was younger who was, I mean, and this was kind of crazy, but like 90, like two, he was still, he was still right. hitting the ball. I mean, why not? Like keep going as, you know, especially, I mean, well, it's all a that's, good endorphin rush and, you know. Well, that's one thing that's great about tennis. It's a lifetime sport. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. What was the hardest tournament that uh, you played or have played and why? Well, I can't really point to a specific term in Alley other than where what was most challenging is when I got to a certain level of playing tennis and there was another, I'm going to say, level above me that was much more skilled. And so what they could do is, um, you know, they could very easily, I shouldn't say very easily, but they had the skills to be mm -hmm. able to um, to to beat me because they were maybe serve and volley and and, and so forth. Uh, I, that's really what I what I can think of being the most difficult. You know, in some ways, as I'm sure you can imagine, Allie, having a physical challenge like mine was really an advantage because you know my opponent would come out and think, "Oh man, I hope I don't lose to this dude." <laughs> I don't want to lose to some dude with three fingers and one leg and half a foot, you know? So right. there was a little added pressure there. Yeah, no, I mean, it totally makes, I mean, there are lots of added advantages to having um, a disability. I um, personally, I mean, people think it's, I mean, this is nothing to do with tennis and competition, but um, I don't use it even though it's on my license. Um, and I mean, it's on my car, but I use it. I, technically um, have a spinner wheel that I need to use 
Mm-hmm. You know what a spinner wheel is? Yeah, on the sure, steering sure. wheel. I don't need it. I mean, I can use, and I don't often, I don't really use it that much, even though it's on the wheel. But it's funny because, like, if my mom's driving my car or, you know, I park it somewhere and there's the valet, you know, pulls it up and whatnot. They're like, oh my goodness, this is so cool. Like, you're so lucky to have this. Now you can go on Amazon and buy it. Um, but it's interesting. And then like also I'm, I'm um, exempt from jury duty in the city um, because of my learning issues. Uh, right. And people are like, you're so lucky. And it's just interesting that there's perks to having a disability that you would never think. And competition obviously is. Well, uh, I think too that, you know, for me, one of the greatest benefits of having a physical challenge is it gives you a, for the most part, you can't say this is true for everybody who has a disability, but it gives you an opportunity for empathy. Mm-hmm. You, you, you're, you have, you're empathetic to people that have challenges. Mm-hmm. Number two, I think that it allows you to access gratitude because, mm-hmm. you know, you've had a few bumps in the road and, and you know that focusing on what you have and the good things in life have tremendous benefits. So I think that in that regard, um, there are a lot of positives from it, no doubt. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. So in times of um, failure or upset, whether it be on the tennis court or in your other you know, aspects of personal life and uh, so forth, how have you managed uh, you know, really, I guess, conveying your uh, capabilities uh, and having a disability um, and not, you know, basically being, you know, being kind of a, you know, downward, you know, and just saying, I can do this, you know, in the face of adversity. Right. Well, I think earlier, you know, I talked about never using it as an excuse. And I right. think that that's, sure. I think that's an important aspect of it. Right. I th- think number two is that, I was always willing to do the work necessary to reach a certain level of success. Right. And what that means is that deciding in advance that you're not going to quit. Right. That you're not going to give up. And I think that's really an important mindset for people that you go into something and, and you say, you know, I'm not going to quit. Now, granted, when you enter into, um, you know, pursuing a dream, you have to make sure that, that it's attainable, that your belief system is, yes, I can do it. And that you say, you know, I'm just not going to quit. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be persistent. Now, persistence means that you persevere and you're also patient. Mm-hmm. So you have to be, I believe, just willing to do the work and saying that you're never going to quit. I've had a ton of failures and I've had tons of losses like most people, Mm -hmm. but it's responding in a way that says, you know what, I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to grow from this and I'm going to move forward. Mm -hmm. It's a great attitude. You were uh, featured your life story uh, in an NBC television uh, series or show um, it called In a New Light. What was your experience and um, feelings towards kind of looking at your journey um, as a tennis player and person who has a disability? Well, it was a great honor. I mean, it was many, many years ago, 40 some years ago, but um, Allie, here's what what I felt really good about is that hopefully it was inspiring to people and help them maybe look at their life with a different perspective. You know, it, it's like when I when I'm working with people in, in, a, in a coaching role, you know, one of my main objectives with them is to give them an outside perspective, to be able to uh, have them maybe look at their life with a different lens, a different perspective, because that can oftentimes make all the difference in the world. Because, mm-hmm. uh, Allie, you know, for, I was telling you earlier, I'm just so impressed with the incredible work that you're doing. Thank I'm you. I'm just thrilled to, to get to know you and, and you inspire me. But you know, and have met people that their life is all about their disability. That's it. That's what they focus on. That's what they dwell on. The challenge with that, as I see it, is your disability is not you. 
you see, it's part of you, but it's not you. It's not your essence, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, here's how I look at it from my life. If I spent all my energy trying to be the best piano player in the world, I'd be miserable. Mm -hmm. If I spent all the time focused in on what I couldn't do, I'd be miserable. Mm -hmm. So I've chosen to look at my life with this lens that I'm going to focus on the positive and the good and what I, what I can accomplish. And I think that's really, really important that for people that have a disability that are listening, that that's not who you are. It's part of who you are. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. I totally get yeah, it. I mean, I mean, excuse me, but no, I mean, absolutely. I don't think uh, disability or difference should define you um, right. at all. Um, and you should take it as, okay, it's a part of you, but then what's the other part of you? And, you know, there's, you know, much more, I mean, whether it be values, personality, and I mean, so forth. Absolutely. Now, obviously some disabilities, obviously not yours or others, um, but, you know, there are obviously some severe that affects their personality and oh, sure. all of that. But generally speaking, in terms of our um, talk and a lot of other people that I speak with, I mean, there's the disability and then there's you. Yeah. And there's, I, I, that was a really, really, I think, important point you brought up because there are certainly exceptions to that, no doubt. But I think in general, yeah, that that's a, a, a very powerful mindset. Yeah. It doesn't I, mean you forget about it or you disregard it. Right. It's just that you look at your life in total. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like I, when I think of my life, I don't just think about having three fingers and one leg and half a foot. Right. My life and who I am is much, much, of course, has much, much more complex than that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and I guess talking about your family, uh, so you have how many kids do you have again? Four, I have four children. You have four kids four and children, you have grandchildren. Yeah. Uh huh, yeah, um, two grandchildren. Uh -huh. Amazing. So, yeah, it's the best. Um, yeah, of course. So growing, I mean, well, not you growing up, but um, your children growing up, I mean, they, clearly I would assume look up to you in so many different ways. Um, but what have they, you know, if anything, and I'm sure there is something, have they um, inspired um, you to either do or, you know, just in terms of being the person that you are, disability or not disability? Mm -hmm. Well, and you can include your wife too. I'm just sure. Saying. Yeah. No, my, my wife, my wife's awesome. She's, uh, she's terrific. And, uh, we, uh, we've known each other since junior high. So oh, wow. is she a tennis player too? Yeah. She plays a little bit of tennis. Uh -huh. Okay. But yeah. you're the main one. Yeah. Well, she spent a lot of time, uh, being a, a Grammy, which she right. no, of course. Absolutely. You know, I don't know that my kids necessarily looked at me as being different because of my physical challenge uh and i was out there participating with them we all went boating together as a family and uh so i don't think that they they looked at me as different i i do think that they have a clear sensitivity though to people that are um have disabilities mm -hmm. uh and i think that they they look at their obstacles maybe a little differently Mm -hmm. than they might have if they didn't have a dad who has a physical challenge like mine. So, right. yeah. Uh, all right. So you have been, um, you're a motivational speaker uh, and you've been inducted into the um, International Speaker Hall of Fame. What yeah. are the messages uh, that you convey to your um, audiences, whether it be to a school or a small um, group or, you know, big corporations? Sure. So it would really be dependent upon the group that I was speaking to, because every time that someone uh, books me to speak, I make sure that I uh, tailor my presentation to fit their objectives, that there's some congruency between what I'm going to say and maybe the corporate vision or the association vision. But overall messages are um, challenges are inevitable, but defeat is optional. Uh, it's about our mindset. The better that we choose to think, the better results we're going to get. Uh, it's about change. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at with COVID, look at how that's changed our life. How are we going to respond to this change? Because 
our response is going to determine whether this change is an obstacle or an opportunity. Right. Um, I talk a great deal about, um, about consistency. It's more important than perfection. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that an effective strategy is basing your success on perfection. I think success should be based upon consistency. Very rarely, if ever, do we reach level of perfection. However, we can always be consistent in our attitudes and our actions. And so those are just kind of a few of the messages that I, that I share. That when I first started speaking, Allie, I, I wanted to develop my communication skills to the point that if I didn't have a personal story to use as a backdrop as a speaker, I was still an effective communicator. In other words, my story was only going to be part of what I was going to share with the group. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. It's about them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so those would be some of the messages, but no, being in the hall of fame as a speaker was amazing. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, you're a best-selling author. So what has been your um, inspiration um, over the years to write? Well, um, for me, writing, again, is, is, a, is a discipline. It's not a gift. I don't necessarily think that I am a, uh, a, a writer that I just sit down and everything just flows. I, I, it requires discipline. But again, Allie, it was wanting to try to get that message out to people. Uh, I just feel very blessed that I have a, a platform in a small way to be able to influence and inspire people. So that's what really did it. That was really the, the reason that I started is because I, I just wanted to get that message out uh, to people because I, you know, I have a real heart for people that are struggling or people that feel like they're the underdog or what, you know, whatever. And so that's why I really wanted to get that message out. Yeah, no. And it's, it's good to, um, it's really good to have motivational words written down and in a book for other people to read. Cause a lot of people, uh, including obviously my website, well, I would them, imagine they look to other people for motivation and, you know, to feel that they're not alone. Uh, and so forth. Exactly. Well, yeah. I, I'm sure you'd agree, Allie, that that's one of the reasons that you do what you do mm -hmm. is to uplift, right? Encourage. Exactly. Uh, help people see possibilities. Yep. It's the same, same type of, you know, you know, work and message. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure that that's what drives you every day. Absolutely. Is that you know that you can make a little bit of a difference. You can have the impact, which I know you're doing. Right. And I'm sure that every day that really is something that drives you to move forward. Absolutely. Right. That's exactly true. And right. So you were um, featured or you're featured on the tennis channel um, with a series called Motivational Mondays with Roger right. Crawford. Uh, what, how did this all come about and present itself? So uh, I've done some work with T Tennis Channel over the years and they came to me and asked me if I would write and produce uh, segments for them. Uh, on Mondays, motivational Mondays, and it, it's just just short segments. It's only between ninety seconds and, and two minutes, but it's been fun. It's been fun to try to come up with something new, and I tie it into tennis and success. So it's even if you don't play tennis, I think people still can. Yeah, no, them. I mean I love well, them. It's been a blast. I mean, it's, it's been it's been a lot of fun, and I love Tennis Channel. They've been so good to me. And, yeah. Uh, just very grateful for the opportunity. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, obviously we're in COVID and pandemic. We don't know when, quote unquote, this is going to lift, although it will lift at some, for, at some point and we'll have, get back to normalcy. Uh, but what are your uh, tennis um, or speaking goals that you'd like to accomplish uh, in the future? Well, that's a really great question. <clears throat> I am like everybody kind of adjusting to this new normal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had a fairly full speaking calendar in uh, from March to the end of 2020 and that all evaporated and I'm not sure when it's going to come back. So yeah. what are holding I, virtual, you know, marathons and tennis. And I think that's crazy, but I mean, people got to make money. They've got to keep their lives, you know, some 
And Great what I've been play. saying to people is, you know, you can't you can't predict what the future is going to hold, but you can prepare. Absolutely. And so I prepared. I have a studio in my office that I can do virtual presentations, and I'm doing a few here and there. And and I have um, you know a number of people that have reached out to me over the years, and I've coached them, and I've really enjoyed that. And I do that through Zoom. Uh, so, you know, I'm staying busy. Uh, it's been no question. It's been an adjustment. We've all been through a lot mm -hmm. and, um, but there's been good, there's been good things too. Uh, right. and I think it's important for all of us, right. That we don't lose sight of the good things, the positive things. Uh, COVID has been, been, been difficult. There's no it's way everyone. to spin that. No, it's been difficult, but we've learned a lot. Absolutely. And I think all of us, are going to think differently about washing our hands. No, <laughs> they, absolutely. You know, I mean, there's been. I mean, it's true. Yeah, there's been a lot of change, and me included. I mean, it's been, you know, it was a hit financially, and of course, and all which was a hit emotionally because you know I miss being up in front of audiences. I this is the longest time I've gone without being on an airplane, and you know, probably 35 years. So oh, yeah, wow. it's been an adjustment, but we've all had to adjust to this. This is not. Okay. It, you know, it's it's called the novel coronavirus because it's new and different. But what is not new and different is change. Mm -hmm. Change is going to happen. I know. And we can either resist it, pretend it doesn't happen, or we can have what I call a forward to normal mindset, realizing that, hey, probably not going to go back to normal, but it's going to be forward. It's going to be forward to normal. And what happens when a new normal is new opportunities open, new possibilities open. And so that's how I'm preparing for it. Um, yeah. But I, I also think it's important, and I know you do too, Allie, is that, you know, you, to not just gloss over it. You know, you can't just say, well, just, just, just get past it and move forward. No, no, no. That's, that's too simplistic because it's, it has caused pain and challenge for people. So, but with the right mindset, we can find opportunities within this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I am totally with you. So lastly, what advice would you give to other people with disabilities who want to pursue a career in tennis or any other sport? First thing that I would say is participate. Mm -hmm. Find a way to participate, whatever that may be. Um, that's the first thing I would say. Second thing that I would say is that success is not being the best, but it's being your best. So like when I walked on the tennis court, I always felt like, gosh, I already won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm out here participating. It was awesome. Right. So mm -hmm. that's one thing that I would, 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 would say. And finally, it would be what I said earlier that your disability is just part of who you are. And okay. once you accept what you cannot change, because I think that's so important, Allie, mm -hmm. just coming to that level of acceptance, what you can't change. Well, this was so wonderful. Well, Allie, thank you so much. Absolutely. It was really great well, to get to know you. Thank you. This was wonderful.